Hello everyone, Josh Attacks here and welcome to a Dreams tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can make jump scares in your creation, which looks just a bit like this right here that I'm standing in front of. So let's get into the video right now. So you are making, for example, you're making a haunted themed creation and you're wondering how you can make jump scares in your haunted creation it is a little complex and it's kind of easy to do but it might be a bit hard for you but this is going to be easy for me because I've done it before so we're going to get right into the tutorial right now okay so before we get into the tutorial the one thing I'm going to say is this will be the last tutorial for this channel here because um on my second channel i was going to do gameplay videos with no commentary but i've now decided that i don't upload as much on that channel i'm going to divert tutorials over to that channel so this video here will be on the main channel the next tutorials will be on the second channel so if you want to go to my second channel and subscribe there i'll have the channel popping up somewhere if you're somewhere up there go to that channel subscribe there so you don't miss out on any more tutorials but by the way as we're going to get into the tutorial so the first thing you want to do is you want an asset for your jump scare so i'm going to click on square then i'm going to go to search here and then type up something that's to do with jump scares you might want like a zombie a ghost nothing there is nothing that's not scary at all you want something that's very scary so for me i'm going to type up zombie and i'm going to use this one here called zombie walk if you have any logic in the asset you just used like now just delete it okay and then the the, the, the next thing you want to do is it depends on what asset you've chosen but what you want to do is click l1 and square then you need to go to physical properties it might show up automatically for you and you want to turn off movable because you do not want your asset to move okay so now what we're going to do is I'm going to drag my zombie, well not my zombie, the, the uh, creator zombie, into this wall area where the jump scare will be placed. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is click square, go to gadgets, then go to logic and processing, get yourself a microchip then click l1 and x l1 and x until it stops saying it because when it stops saying l1 and x it's properly connected to the assets right here now what you want to do is open up the microchip here the next thing we're going to do is click square come out of logic and processing go to sensors and inputs and then grab yourself a trigger zone after you grab the trigger zone, the next thing you want to do is click on square and you're still going to be in the sensors and inputs menu here. Click circle, click circle again, go to animate. Then we're going to grab ourselves a timeline because it's going to be used as a timeline for what the jump scare will do. So it might have some animation to it. So what you want to do is you want to go to animate and then go to keyframe. Now you want to clone at least four to five keyframes. I'm going to clone four for mine because I've got a jump scare audio that I can use. And you, I would recommend you guys using it because it's the only scream one we've got. So what you want to do is go to square, go to search. It's in my creations tab and you want to find something called screamer which is this right here 
If you search anything that's called Screamer, I would use this one re right, right here, which is by me. Because um, other Screamer sound effects are not scary at all, so I'd recommend use this one here, that's by me. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the timeline. We're going to add the Screamer to the timeline here at the start. Then we're going to add all four of the keyframes to the timeline here. So you want one at the start. You want one somewhere around the middle. Then you want one somewhere around after the middle right like here. And you want one at the end right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to space them out. So let's click on R2 here to adjust the end. So I'm going to have it to here for me. Click on R2 on this keyframe here. We're going to do the same thing right here. Just make sure they are in line as well. Okay. So I have to make sure this one here is in line. Then click R2. Move it along to make it big. Then adjust this one in position too. Like that. And you want it in line for where the screamer finishes as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on L1 and square on the object. Then I'm going to go to physical properties. Make it visible so we don't even know that it's going to be there. Because it's going to be edited on the keyframes. So after you've made your asset invisible, click on timeline and then we're going to edit all four of the keyframes. You can edit to however you want but there's one important important animation to it. So you want to click on I want to square on the keyframe. Then what you want to do is go to square click on show and hide and you need to have on preview invincibility so you can edit your hidden zombie now click on L1 and square go to physical properties if you need to and then you want to make your asset visible that's the most important one out of all of them now you can edit to however you want I'm gonna edit the body the zombie body so L1 and square L1 and square that I want an X, I want a square. I'm going to change the colour here. So I'm going to have the colour as a nice dark red here. And I'm going to glow it to 35% will do. And shyness to 72%. And tint amount to just 17% will do. If you finished your animation, click on stop recording. So you've edited your first keyframe right here. You're going to do the same with these ones. So you edit it to however you want. But make sure all of the keyframes have visible turned on right here. Otherwise, zombie wall disappear without being visible so I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit the red leg like that then I'm gonna have it an orange color there and then I'm gonna glow that to 40% no 32% will do now I'm gonna stop recording that same again okay keyframe I want to square on the body, not just that particular body, the full body, okay? Physical properties, and then turn on visible right here. And then just edit your, anim animate your puppet here. Or your jump scare. We're going to call it jump scare, okay? I'm going to do the last one guys, okay? Right, so now you have all of the keyframes edited. 
let's put that timeline symbol back to its start so now what you want to do is click on L1 and circle to close it click L1 and square on the timeline and you want to set the playback mode to once so it only plays once during when you're standing in the zone here so now we need to edit the trigger zone so click L1 and square on trigger zone go to him go to zone size first and then zone shape I have that I have minus cube because it's a lot easier for me and you want it around this jump scare here I'm gonna have mine a bit further so my player doesn't realize it's here once you walk in here it's gonna be two me one meter from the face so that's why I make it scary like that so after you've made your cube size go to important properties make sure it's set to tag detect your player in there like that and then detect it to the power button on the timeline like that that will be everything on the jump scare so when you walk into the zone what will happen is the jump scare will appear out of nowhere because the trigger zone is connected to the timeline it's going to play a little it depends how long you've made it mine's five seconds long it's going to play a five second timeline on what the animations is going to do and it's going to play the audio all the way through so now we're going to test it oh my god so yeah that's how you do it guys so if you're wanting jump scares in your haunted creations make sure you come to this tutorial here and make your own jump scare if this tutorial did indeed help you out give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below for more tutorials that will be coming up next but do subscribe to my other channel now because there's going to be no more tutorials on this channel so do subscribe to Joss Attacks 2.0 and that's where all the tutorials will be and we will see you later.